going on, y'all? Welcome to another episode of the Bomb Two Boys podcast, the podcast that highlights the Kuli talent and the African diaspora around the world. Um, I'm your host, Baleka Wisa, here with Dr. Dilabanza. Right. And today, our topic is Afro Ballers. And we got a really, really special guest. Uh, today's guest is the founder of Afro Ballers, a platform that highlights African athletes on the continent and throughout the diaspora, created in December 2018 after the completion of his PhD thesis. This guy's incredible. Afro Ballers does a terrific job providing role models for aspiring athletes in the diaspora, as well as showcase the untapped potential of the continent, economic as well as athletic. It's our pleasure to welcome to the podcast. And um, brother, please forgive me if I mispronounce your last name, Kevin Bahoon Wilson. Yeah, that was it, man. Perfect. Oh, right. Right. I did it. I did it. Okay. Yeah. We're happy to have you here, brother. So, uh, uh, Dr. Yeah. Kevin, uh, yes. tell us about yourself. There was so much, so I'm glad, Patrick, you put it like in a nice little short paragraph, but tell us about yourself, brother. Uh, so, I was, I was born and raised uh, in Geneva, in the Geneva mm-hmm. area. Uh, and, uh, you know, I grew up playing basketball. Mm-hmm. Uh, I grew up playing, I played with uh, Clint Capella. I played for the um, mm-hmm. Atlanta Hawks now. Oh, and wow. The Houston Rockets. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, we played together. and. Um, yeah, then um, after my, uh, I think what you just called the GED in America. Uh-huh. Yeah, so after my GED, I went over the, um, I went to the UK to study. And uh, then uh, after my bachelor, I did a PhD in the uh, University of Leeds in uh, mechanical engineering. Wow. And, yes, and then uh, after that, uh, when I finished it, you know, I kind of, like when I was writing my thesis, really, I was watching. You know, when you write a thesis, it's like a year long process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, when I was writing, I was watching a lot of basketball because, you know, it's my, it's one of my hobbies. Right. And I, was, I was watching Giannis, Joel Embiid, the La Depot. Yeah. Chilling. And I'm thinking, man, yo, we got so many Africans just doing the things, man, like just killing right. people in the NBA. Right. And there's literally no platform for them, or as as far as I know, there's nothing. Right. So I do my, I do my research and I check everything. and find all those platforms that you know, that promote the, the African culture, dancing, mm-hmm. music, and everything. There's nothing for sports. And this, and like right now, we have so many African athletes dominating every single major leagues. Right. Right. The, the, this is pretty much where the idea stemmed. I was like, yo, it needs to be a platform for us, for Africa. Uh, that was so I just kind of analyzed that gap. And yeah, just overnight, I just made the name up, Apple Ballers. Uh-huh. Trying to just, you know, just try, try to find the fit, trying to create graphics. And uh, yeah, uh-huh. so like I found that, you know, I, I found quite early on that the, that the next generation is attention. And they they don't have they don't have a voice they don't have any media that you know that really covers them properly. So like at the beginning of the platform, I was covering them a lot, and that kind of right. need to get a, lot, a bit of smoke you know, to, to kind of get seen by NBA people, right? Jo- ESPN journalists so, so, and so on and so forth. Right. So, right. Yeah. So that's uh yeah that's pretty much how Alpha Boys started and uh, almost how how I got there you know. But you Isn't know that- you more about it. Kevin, isn't it funny how there's one African player on every NBA team? That's incredible. Yeah, man, like that's pretty incredible. But it's, it's almost at, almost every NBA team, right? Uh, uh, but like, yeah, like yeah, that just shows that we 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 are there now. We, I mean, there are, there's a lot of Africans that make it to the league, right? So I think the the uh, interesting data is that there are about fifty NBA players in the, in the league. Yeah. Overall, like African descent. When I say African, I mean like guys that were born that if they are second generation African, third generation Africans. Right. But, um, yeah. As long as they can kind of trace back to Africa, I call them Afro ballers. Right. Um, about, yeah, there's about 50 of them in the, in the league. And that's pretty crazy. That's yeah, pretty because, crazy. Yeah, because a, I mean, we've only played what, basketball for what, 25, 30 years maybe? Uh, basketball, yeah, it's uh, no, it's older than that. six more, 60. 60? But that's but the we play, we play football, we don't hear it say like this is to the oh, country, yeah. you know what I mean? Oh, you mean Africans? Africans yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. 
But that just shows that the kind of talents that we have. I mean, I think you know, we, we go in the athletics, we go in the entertainment, we go in all those all those sports. And when you see African Americans, mm-hmm. what they do, there's nothing that we can do in Africa. We have, uh, in terms of entertainment, we have our own ways of doing entertainment, but we just don't have the same, the same level of productions. When it comes to sports, we have the same talents. You see, Sadio Mane, you see how our skill in Europe. Right. And, uh, like literally, we have the same, we have the same talents that um, um, that, that American, African Americans have. We just need to create opportunities for our people so they can shine, and then they can come and create back on the continent as well. Right. So the the that's pretty much the the idea is to really inspire people in the next generation and make them believe that they can do it. Right. Uh, they they you gotta see someone like Ibaka who was homeless, uh, like literally he survived right. more. And like right. now, he's a he's, he's one of the best defenders, one of the best defenders in the NBA. Right. Um, and yeah. uh, literally, like the uh, the most interesting, the most interesting part is that he's really focusing on investing back on the talent of the continent. Right, right. That's how it should be because we gotta help our people because we don't have the same platforms that people in America have. Right. And, and the thing is like. Because we we are going through this 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 um this movement around Black Lives Matter, yeah. African Americans even even tap into their full potential in terms of growth and who they are. Yeah, and even below that right now. So like right now, like the thing to aim for all of us, for, like from the, the diaspora, is to be able to at least be seen as an African American in terms of uh, achievements and productions and so on and so forth. Right, but right. Then, the ultimate aim is to be respected at all levels, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. The confidence. Oh, Patrick, you want to go to the next question? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you, you started, obviously, you, you touched on how you came up with Afro Ballers. So I'm just yeah. wondering, who else is uh, on your team with you? Uh, so, the team is um, Poison Ivy the DJ. Mm. Uh, she's, the, she's the DJ of the Dallas Mavericks. She's the DJ of the Dallas Mavericks. Word? She, yeah, word, man. <laughs> All the, DJ in the NBA, uh, second female ever to DJ in the NBA. So yeah, that's a she's a man. She's making moves, man. Like I'm telling y'all, yeah. The, the sis, the sis is doing great. The sis is uh, she's making history. And uh, beyond that, beyond uh, just basketball, she's just trying to be a voice for Africans and also for African females. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, so I really respect her hustle. She's one of the people that supported me early as well in the journey. So uh, yeah, man, uh, we we kind of join forces together. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, now she she has her own show on Afro Ballers called Mid Afro Ballers. I don't know if you had seen it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I got to see an episode. Two, two, two NBA players, and uh, uh, very soon it's gonna be more than that. But like, uh, yeah, that's what we've been doing so far. And uh, yes, man, I also have a co-founder, uh, based in uh, California. But man, this is it. Yeah. So that, that's how that's how we got. That's that's how that's how the, the team is built right now. Three people. Hey, when you come to LA, you let it, you let us know so we can come to what you call one of these um DJ parties. This is this yeah. is great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wonder, and before you jump to the next one, boy, I just wonder how did you get linked up with Poison Ivy and also your co-founder? Oh man, uh, I think this is a bit of like like okay, Afro Ball is, is a platform that's not being. Uh, I think the concept has not been, I, I think it's been seen, but I don't think it's been executed like I have been doing it. So I think a lot of people have been talking about it. Even people that don't follow it, I, I, I know that they see the work that's being done. Mm-hmm. So I think they they came across it that way, you know, they followed it. And um, and uh, yes, man, like, you know, we ended up talking, like but the funniest part with Poison Ivy was that one of my friends was in fashion. Yes. Uh, was at uh, an event and Poison Navy was there. And I was like, yo, like, all you guys know each other. That's, you know, that's, that's weird. That's like, you, you from the UK, she from the US. Yeah. You, you partying together. Like, I don't get, I don't get how it's working. Uh, and, you know, you realize that when you get into the space, it, the world gets smaller. So, uh, when you're in music, fashion, and everything, the world gets smaller. So, uh, yeah, I kind of got like the official introduction to that friend. Right. Uh, uh, and, um, yeah, man, we, ever since we've been just kicking it, I met her, 
So we we talked before on WhatsApp and uh, so on and so forth, and we went right. back together uh, for the um, let's move at borders uh, Africa. Yeah, he was there, so that's when we, you know, we uh, we really bonded together, and then uh, yeah, man, and then uh, that's how I started. That's how I started. Kevin, Kevin, what's a typical day for Afro ballers? So like, how yeah. does that go? Like, yeah. So the team is really lean right now. So right. Um, it's really lean. So, um, uh, first of all, to get African content is really hard, right? Right. And, uh, I'm pretty much the only person uh, putting the content on the platform. So, it's great. It's time consuming, mm -hmm. uh, especially now that there's nothing happening. You know, you got to be so much right. the mm -hmm. concept. And you have to find concepts. And the fact that it's African as well, like, you can't really take the content that everybody's posting because it's. So you're trying to create a different storyline. You're trying to make a different lane. Right. So, uh, I think these are these. This is yeah. One of the challenges that I have is that you know I, I gotta create. I, I gotta be the creator of that new narrative for African athletes. So, right. Uh, and, uh, it, it's tough, man. It's tough. And these days I'm a bit busy, but when I spend some, I, it takes me about yeah. I would say three hours a day to get a good a good day on Afro Ball here. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I mean, yeah, I'm just saying your page looks great. I mean, yeah, you're putting in good work. Because yeah. I, I was going to say, and this is kind of second what uh, Blake was saying. Like your page is great, not just you know in the content, but the layout, the look of it. Like yeah. the one thing, like the fact that you told me, oh, it's only three people. I'm just like, really? Because yeah. just the layout, the formatting, the it's <laughs> like, wow, this dude took time in putting this together. Like it. You could you could just easily just repost people's stuff and I mean I do that on my page. You could just repost somebody's stuff and just yeah. put you know change the caption, but you actually you can tell it's like no this guy took time to craft this together. Wow. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Oh yeah, so um I mean we three but I I got a few designers that helped me there and there, you know. Uh mm. yeah, they helped me with that. But like yes, so it's mostly it's my idea, you know, I gotta think about all this. Mm. Well I get the information, then uh, you know, you gotta tell it to the designers so they do it the way you want it. And uh, yeah, man, but uh, yeah, that's a uh, right now. Yeah, it's pretty much my uh, right now is me. But you know, as we grow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. we're gonna get more people on this. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me ask you this, um, Patrick. Did I do number three with the surprising challenges? Or yeah, yeah. yeah. So, what are some of the surprising surprising challenges that Afro Ballers has to deal with? You know, of course, pre COVID, like the biggest challenge is to get accepted by the biggest corporations. Uh, and uh, for them to, to be recognizing the Afro boys as the, the, the media for African athletes. I think especially it's starting to look like this, uh -huh. uh, but uh, uh, now the, the, the biggest challenge is to make it the biggest platform for African athletes worldwide. So, man, that's, uh, that's, the, that, that's the ambition, and that's what we strive for, and that's the challenge that you know, I'm facing, is to get it, also to gain that credibility and that respect from the people that are in the game already. Because I'm, I'm new, I'm new, I'm new to this. Is this something just as simple as like I don't know? I'm just thinking from my imagination. If like Giannis, Ibaka, and Capella say go follow Afro Ballers, and then it makes you legit. I think it would help. It would uh -huh. help. Um, I think when when they say that, um, I don't know. I don't know if you guys are very really familiar with the uh, media space. Because uh, you have you have your brand of uh, bunch of boys. Uh, I don't I don't know if it's a podcast, but well, I think when it comes to media, there's a whole thing, there's a whole ecosystem. You must have a whole revenue model uh, that makes sense. You must have, you must, have uh, you must act on the tech side as well a little bit, uh, and then you must get the recognition from the other athletes as well. Right. So, all this will make you, you know, the, the platform that's respected. Uh, right. So we 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 there, man. We we have a website that's running. Uh, it's doing doing pretty good. Uh, we got a golf. A decent amount of visits a day. Uh, the social media is, uh, is on the growth, it's growing as well. Right. Uh, the, the app is going to come out in uh, normally the summer. Mm -hmm. uh, so, man, we're working, man. We're working. Well, okay. Patrick, hit, hit, hit that next one, Patrick. Okay. And I'm going to change the order just a little bit because you've already, he's already started to go into it. So, yeah. what kind of partnerships do you currently have? Uh, Afro Ball, as you said. Or currently have? Man, there's nothing really. Like right now, it's all talks. It's a lot of talks in the background. Uh, uh, there's a, 
there's athletes that want to, you know, use it as their own platforms to, uh, to, uh, to talk, to, mm. to interact with fans. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of things that I put in the background. And uh, when everything gets done, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy, especially like there's a few ones that, that we're still talking right now. It's still structuring, but wow. it's said and done. Yo, we, this is gonna, this is gonna, this, this is gonna take Afro Bullets to another level. Honestly, that's uh, I just can't wait to officialize those things. But um, yeah, this is happening, man. We the partnership is a, uh, is uh, we working a lot with Afro Bullets and magazine. Uh -huh. Yeah, we uh, we work with them a lot, uh, and there's a platform called Afro Beating as well that we work with mm -hmm. uh, a little bit, um, and. Uh, Everybody that kind of want to partner with us uh, right now, like uh, I kind of work with like, um, I think you must know this page called DR Congo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we yeah. interviewed him. Yeah, we interviewed him like a month ago. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I don't work with them officially, but you know, we discuss sometimes, they send me some info or or uh, sometimes I talk with just recruiters and stuff like that, you know, just to give more information. And uh, overall, like, Afro Boy is a platform for everybody. So everybody that wants to partner with us, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that this is free. Like I, I, I'm ready to partner with everybody for like on a, an official level as well. So uh, yeah. like, I just really wanted to be the people's media for African sports. So I just want people to get that comfort mm -hmm. of uh, saying us a DM and you know, get a conversation, man. Like I, I don't mind just talking to DM sometimes. Right. So, uh, yeah. I think that's great because Kevin, you two, you guys are, are at the forefront of this. Because it wasn't until once we started doing Bantu Boys and we started like research and we're like, we didn't even know Afro Ballers existed. We didn't know DR Congo basketball. We're like, this is great. You know what I mean? Because we need that back home. We need that. That's great. That's great. That's great. How did you find out about Afro Boys? I mean, I'm like, I, I'm, a, I'm a basketball fan. So I love NBA. I love basketball. So when we were like looking at guests, I remember, I think I might have followed Surge. And, and then from Surge, I think I saw DR basketball. And then from then you popped up and I was like, Afro Bob, like, what's happening? Like, I was more upset that I didn't know about you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, why did it take me this long to find you? Okay. I don't know. I think, I think it's kind of hard to grow. On, I mean, on the IG nowadays, you know, it's not like back in about 2012, 2013 days where, you know, uh, people just think like back in the days, used to comment, there was no DMs. Yeah. So and then your friend got to come on the other thing and watch the clip or he's got to watch the video of it. Yeah. Right, he's got to send a comment. So before you know it, you get like 150 comments. Right. Yeah. But like, now, nah, oh, this is happening in the DM. Right, you know, right. You know what I'm saying? So I think uh, this plays a role as well. And I think the algorithm as well is just harder, man. No, harder. no, and that's why it's like, it's funny you say that because my comedian buddies that are, that have big pages, since yeah. Corona, they've noticed their numbers have been like altered. The algorithms have changed. They're like, yo, I usually average a thousand comments. I'm not getting that. What's happening or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a, it's just, it's funny, man. Like that, this is why, this is why like Afro Ballers, and I think any media brand mm -hmm. has to be bigger than just social media. Like, I mean, literally, you must be present yeah. every single social media, uh -huh. but you must make sure that you create an identity uh, for your brand that's not only associated to, to, to who you are on Instagram and Twitter. Like, yeah. you be affiliated to, to, to a brand, you know? Yeah. Like, if you watch any other brands, they have compelling content on, on, uh, on Instagram, but they also have compelling content on Twitter or right. on, on YouTube or on their website. Right. You know? So, uh, you see, that, that's what I'm trying to say. So, like, this is, like, when you actually look at it, like, media companies, mm -hmm. they, they create identities for themselves. On, the, on, on various media platforms, so uh, yeah, so that's no. we should gotta be doing this, man. No, that's right, now, right now, the biggest like if you if you big on IG, uh -huh. and you can get a lot of things done. So like right now, we focus a lot more on IG for now, but mm -hmm. we kind of run the other platforms as well, so we can respect it as a brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, Pat, you want to go to the number uh, the next one? Yeah. Um, act, well. Because what it is is, um, and obviously you talked about your partnerships. One thing I wanted the uh, the viewers to see, um, I understand you did a uh, collaboration with what is it, Come Chop, an event during uh, African Chop House, African Chop House, African Chop House, yeah, yeah, African yeah. Chop House, 
uh, during All Star Weekend. So I'm going to play a clip of it. Pretty much the whole thing is a short clip, and we'll come yeah. back and just talk about it a little bit. Okay. Yeah. tell you something first of all that fufu looked incredible that's one right that was a good solid grandma fufu art ever <laughs> right, right uh what did you call it kevin yeah. so when you guys joined uh, let me ask you this uh afro balls and afro african chop house you guys joined forces to create a special moment where you could host our players creatives and executives during the all-star game weekend mm -hmm. uh, in chicago mm -hmm. and how did how did that how did that form how did that come uh, together? So first of all, uh, African Chop House is known for doing those uh, those gatherings a lot, and uh, I think they, they do most of them in New York, but they, they happen to make them happen in other places. Uh -huh. So um, uh, you know, they they were in Chicago. Uh, we were having an event, uh -huh. uh, and they were having an event, and we we're like, "Yo, man, we are both gonna have African crowds, so you know, let's just right. get it all together." So. Uh, yeah, man. So we uh, we we joined forces for that weekend. Uh -huh. That was a great event. Like uh, honestly, it was uh, it was uh, I think for me it was the first time that I got to see the impact of my work. Yeah. Uh, like you know the the, the president of NBR who was there. Mm. Uh, Pop Smith Sabon, Pop Smith Sabon too. Yeah, yeah. He was the, he was the George Mason, right? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, he was at George Mason, like was it George George Washington or George Mason? He was in the final yeah, four. Yeah, George, yeah, George Washington, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was there. There was a couple journalists. There was uh, people that worked for really known brands. And, right. Uh, people that I mean, the official the presidents of like the national basketball team, and uh, you know, uh, you really got to see the the. I mean, I really got to appreciate. The, the impact of my of my work and of my work and my team's work right has been done over the the, the the year the year it's only one year so yeah I mean, year and a half now but at the time it was one year of work so uh, that's really, that was really humbling uh, um, I'm also thankful because you know I can chop house was able to uh, to they, they I mean they used to do stuff events so those were a lot of people. Uh, uh -huh. that, it was very valuable to the event. But I think that was really good. We also managed to uh, to get some content that we're going to release when the right. video is going to come out and stuff. So uh, yeah, man, it was good. It was good. It was. Uh, I think it was. Good. It was really good for me and really uh -huh. humbling and uh, really motivating at the same time and inspiring to just keep going because I know, I know we can do. I know we can do better. Yeah, and, uh, all right, we got to do better, man. You know, we we got to be up there. No, it's great because for I know for you, just even for me to watch that, I was just like, we have a market and we have the support. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing. Like, there, if you're doing your job or you're you're do, you're working really hard, there's other African entities that are like, hey, he's doing something. Come do something with us. Exactly. Like like you say, like uh, when you do something like that, you see that other Africans so ready to partner with. Right. They, 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 we have got Africans that are running important positions with uh, Twitter or right. CNN or you know uh, other big institutions. Right. And 
when they come to your events and they, they, they see the work ethic that you have and uh, you guys are able to, to, to have a chat and they, they kind of see that you align with their, own, their core, uh, core values, you know, then the discussion for partnership, you know, starts happening, starts, you know, right. it starts going. So like you said, like, yeah, I think we got to also make sure we connect with our people. So I think the advantage of those type of events is that you're able to connect mm -hmm. uh, with uh, people from that you never heard of before and different backgrounds and, uh, you know, just get everything together. Right. Get every, everybody together. Um, go ahead, Pat, you can go ahead and hit that, hit that next one. Okay. So um, just wondering, do you have any, like, relationships? I mean, obviously you talked about playing basketball with Clint Capella, uh, Capella, Capella, let me say, is that yeah, correct? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But do you have any relationships with any other Afro ball? Because I know you said there's some people, it sounds like, but is there any that you can disclose those, those relationships? Uh, disclose? Uh, yeah. It's okay if you can't, but I just want to. We understand. We understand. Yeah, I think it's best I don't, don't say the thing here. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, no, understand. Uh, understand. Yeah, I mean, there's a, uh, I think uh, I, I saw that the, the note that you wrote, Dennis Schroeder. Uh -huh. So like yeah, Dennis Schroeder, like uh, his brother, his brother was following the platform on one of the first, I think before we even got 1K follower, mm. I was following Apple Ballers. And, um, I, I don't even know how I spotted that he was his brother. Right, so, right. You know, man, I just sent a DM and we started talking, blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. and, uh, man, I think he just liked the movement. And, you know, Dennis Schroeder, even though, like, this is for the people in the comments that say, Dennis Schroeder is not an Afro baller. Yo, he was born in Germany, but his parents are Africans. From Dennis, Gambia. Dennis Schroeder from Gambia. Like, that, you know, yeah. that's what I hate. Like, remember during um, the All Star game, Kevin, when you know how this All Star game, they did a, uh, they do the draft now, where LeBron yeah. and Giannis pick the teams? Yeah, yeah. It's African said, African. Remember when Giannis said, I'm going to pick my African brother, um, Embiid? And everybody was like, oh, he's from Greece. No, he just lives in Greece. Exactly, man. Exactly. That's true. Kevin, what is like your dream partnership or collaboration? I'm, I'm assuming, of course, the NBA, of course. Does anybody? Yeah, you know, uh, I think um, to be able to uh, to partner with every single major sports league uh, for an African audience or Afro audience, you know, that's the dream. Mm -hmm. And also, um, uh, kind of grow Afro ballers bigger than just the media side. I mean, still media, but like, you know, I would like to kind of go into uh, media rights as well. Mm -hmm. uh, at one point, you know, kind of just people's those rights in Africa. Because mm -hmm. uh, I just feel right now that um, we are the only, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think we're the only sports media mm -hmm. that's able to talk to a young audience. Right. Uh, Probably uh, like and today, like we know the continent is really young. Yeah, uh, yeah. The yeah. continent is eighteen years old or younger. Yeah. Uh, I think we, if we keep working and we become what we believe we can become, mm -hmm. uh, I think we should be able to have an impact or an influence on the youth and the way everything is seen, at least from the sport, sportive side. Right. And that's like a great selling point for. You know, later on, when we want to partner, uh, to when we want to structure um, strategic partnerships with um, bigger entities, right? So, uh, yeah, man, we just got to keep working and uh, you know, trying to be that company that just uh, that really influences and works with uh, the young people. So, at that point, you know, everything should be easy. So, it's a matter of just going to uh -huh. platform, man. I'll say this, Pat, before you go, and Kevin, I'll, I'll, I, I tell this to all of our guests, and we say this to every guest, tag us. We're here to support. You know what I'm saying? Like, it yeah. takes nothing to repost and get the word out. Like, it's five seconds. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't tag us. You're doing something great? Please. You're our brother. We share. Yeah. With, people need to know about this. I got you. I got you, bro. I, I will share your work. <laughs> I, will share what you do. Like, I like the concept of what you guys are doing. Like, I really, really mess with it. I didn't really know about it. No. Uh, uh, I saw, but I like the logo. Oh, thank you, brother. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> now, logo always like catches my eyes. I say, "Oh, these are the Congolese uh, I don't know yeah. why we got so many names on IG. Like, yeah, it's, it's a lot of different accounts, brother. Oh, yeah, a lot of different accounts. Oh, 
What you do I need to do? But you know what it is? Like you said off camera, the time is now where we're all like, we got, we, everybody got the bug. You know, like you said, Africa's young. So we're yeah, all, we, try, we gotta get out. We gotta try to get out. So yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you are trying to get out. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty much it, man. That's pretty much it. So, um, Pat, you wanna go to the next one? Yeah, yeah. So this one, and you, you started going to it. Like what opportunities, like economic opportunities, for sports, yeah. do you see in Africa specifically? Mm. Oh man, mm. so many, so many. Mm. Uh, I think uh, first, of, first and foremost, we gotta invest in courts. We gotta get more courts everywhere. Right, right. courts, basketball courts, any sport. Uh, simply because kids gonna start training by themselves, and. Uh, it's to start playing and you know, like, uh, like I, I mean, you guys are in America, so I think you know that you just go to the street, you see the basketball court, and people are always bowling all yeah. the time. Bowling. So, like, we, we need to get that in Africa. I'm I'm in Africa right now, uh -huh. and um, there's only one basketball court that I've seen the whole day because you see my neighborhood. I mean, because uh, you know, it's a private neighborhood, so there's one, but the rest I've not seen any basketball court anyway. When I when I was in America, uh -huh. if you go. Right, court. Right. Yeah. You know what I said? Kevin, so like, Kevin, look, when you know the the owner of the Clippers, right? When he bought the team, you know what he did? He went to South LA where all the black people are. Patrick, you know this. He put a bunch of Clipper courts. So okay. now you have kids under 10 that are like Clipper fans that would have been Laker fans because he yeah. just put so many Clipper courts all in LA. And I respect that. That's yeah. what's been done. Like, so this is why I'm really hoping the BAL will become uh -huh. what I think it can become, like the, the powerful league, but not only in terms of um, competition among the players, right. but also we, among the owners of the teams. Like you wanna, like I know right now that the, the BAL is not structured like the NBA. It's mm -hmm. not structured like the NBA. It's structured more like um, like a European football. Right, right, right. Mm, okay. Uh -huh. um, like teams that you know it's the best teams that kind of get in the league right uh -huh. so um but i just want people to start investing in those teams so investing in those teams to start building the real some uh, some some type of pedigree right to, uh, to um, every african team and then uh it's going to be easier for us like literally like you said like when the owner of the Clippers came through obama came and they put in everyone in LA. right could be the thing when when uh, whoever's gonna buy a team in Ghana or in Congo and stuff like that, he's got his aim has gotta be bigger than just be to bigger than just participating in the NBA. It's gotta be about impacting the whole right. community and yeah. create opportunities for the whole people around, as well as being able to create a team that can compete and win a championship. So right. um when you say opportunities in Africa, like I think it's a matter of um first of all uh, Grassroots program, mm -hmm. uh, courts, new courts, um, investing into um, into the infrastructures, uh, like yeah. get a real arena, like for anybody so they can train properly as well. Right. Uh, and uh, we gotta also educate ourselves about sports uh, mm -hmm. because um, this, this is this is such a big industry that Africans overlook so much. Right. And right. it, can be, it can be a boost to economies, and um, I think they like it, like if you watch like the impact of LeBron on Cleveland, right, right. Was, I think he because he was there, Cleveland was earning an extra like twenty billion dollars a year. Yeah, and, yeah. And when he left, the town just you know just became boring and it became dull, uh -huh. and like, literally like. You gotta realize that sports can bring you so much traffic into your city. Like, you can just right. you can catalyze the economy of the whole city. You can be able to to invest, to build, to right. just create like, next level stuff. And like, literally, I dream of Africa uh -huh. that's modern. That can you can literally go to Africa and feel like you are in Dubai or in New York or you know, but just the African version of it. You know what I'm saying? Look, Kevin, you know what's funny? You saying that about LeBron. I'm here in LA. I'm a Kobe's my favorite player of all time. God bless the dead. And remember when he ruptured his Achilles? Yeah. 
and he wanted to retire. He was like, I'm done. But the Lakers signed a big spectrum deal, the cable company or whatever, right? It was like a, like a I don't know, $2 billion deal. So when yeah. they paid him, they were like, yo, we have to pay him because he runs the whole L.A. downtown economy. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, it's, you know, my dream is if every African nation has their own team and we just have like an Afro league. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if Ghana has their own league, the best of that league plays. Yeah. Like Syria, it's it's not. It's, uh, this, this, these things exist. These things exist already, like uh, championships within the country. Uh -huh. You know, the infrastructures are not the same. The investments are not the same. Right. Uh, nobody's, like, really looking at these. And I know guys that play professionally in Africa their whole career, man. And they, they don't complain. They love it. They literally love playing here in Africa. Really? Yeah, man, they, they literally love it. Like, if you talk to BAL players, some of them, they think not to get their whole career. So, um, uh, I think this is cool. I think this is cool. We just got to uh, make sure we get more more, uh, more exposure. Uh, like, when I say that, like, you think about players like George Reha, who mm -hmm. playing African, African leagues, and out of nowhere, made it to Europe and then won the Ballon d'Or uh, in the 90s. And that could be the same thing now with uh, guys here in Africa. Like, if you get more exposure of what's happening on the continent, yeah. uh, in chips, you know, you go, you might, you may be able to just grab a kid and take him out, yeah, to, right, um, to to America just to play. I mean, not necessarily America, but at least uh, like uh, until Africa is ready, somewhere right. where you get the right tools to get ready for the next level. Like um, I remember watching the I don't know if you know the Afro basket. Afro basket is like. Um, hmm. The African Cup of Nations for basketball. Oh yeah, 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 I know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, like, I, so they, the thing is that they had this for like under sixteen, under eighteen, blah blah blah, right? Uh -huh. And um, so I this uh, I watch these man. I watch these just for my own fun. But like, I see that some of the kids that were killing it in the in those uh, tournaments, you know, some of them have been able to travel all the way to America mm -hmm. now. Or the travel to Europe simply because just for that two weeks time when they were playing for like for the team, that there be more exposure, and um, they they been able to make it. But can you imagine the amount of kids? I mean, because I see them myself, right? Because uh, I, I get a lot of DMs commissions, right? Right. Uh, from life I see them myself. Can you imagine the amount of talents that's left untapped on the continent, and yeah. because they don't have anything to kind of expose them or, or give them. They don't have a platform that gives them a way to be seen. The talent is crazy, man. Like we just yeah. got structure all these things and and use. I think we gotta use sports as a way to get in common the continent. We gotta wow. use um, sports and tech because I don't know. We can't make much out, out of oil and gas and cocoa that we have. But, but, <laughs> no, you know, you know, you're so talented. You got so much. Kevin, when we interviewed DR Congo, he said you'll walk around Africa and you'll see like a 13 year old that's six foot four just walking around. You know, in America, they'll grab that kid and be like, no, 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 no. Straight up. Straight up. Like, literally straight up. They, they, she's six foot 13, 15. said, yo, man, you got to play ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. she, that, that's an opportunity to become, uh, become as soon as you play, in, I mean, in the NBA or even in your league, if you're not a millionaire, at least you have half a million in your account. You know what I'm saying? And that's, yeah. too, that's a lot of money, man. Yeah. That's and you know, money, you know, impact the people on the continent as well. Yeah. 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 And you, you touched on it earlier, but, and it's one thing, like, it, it came up in the interview we did with DR Congo Basketball, and you brought it up a few times in this one. It's the, you know, unfortunately, Africa with oil, gas, other resources, there's so much politics and danger on that kind of stuff. But the yeah. beautiful thing about this athletics and sports, is literally you now can maybe it's not the right word but you you're, you can exploit yourself you can exploit your own athletic ability and use it to change your whole your whole situation for you and your family because now you come to wherever you play in europe you play in in the states you get an education that maybe you would have been able to get back in your home country now you got more access to funds and now you're sending it back home you're sending it back to the family you're contributing in some kind of way and it, you have enough people doing this, you could change the kind of situation, living situations of a lot of people. Exactly. I think that's uh, that's what we got to do, man, because we, we need that in Africa for now. 
Let me die for my head. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Kevin. Sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Kevin. I'm sorry. But I said, like, um, I said, like, we need to do that for poor people. Uh, yeah. Those, those, I mean, those of us that have been able to, to get a decent education. Yeah. Uh, to, to get a decent job and uh, and uh, in our platforms like like we have, like we own. Yes, sir. I feel like this is our duty to, to, to you know, uh, at least do something for our people in the country. If it's, if it's not uh, financially uh, driven, at least it's got to be some sort of inspiration, a platform where they can express themselves and they get to talk and, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. You, know, you got to build this. You got to build this. So, so Dr. Kevin, um, we're all in COVID-19. I hope you and your family are like all healthy. What type of effects has it been on, on athletics that you've seen? Cause you know, like the NBA is postponed. I think they said, is it going to start in September or? Well, I think uh, the, it's what I saw, uh, July. No, 30th. Okay. Uh, wait, wait, Pat, what is, what is ball season? Patrick, what's that? The, 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 the bat, you know, the Africa league. The bat, oh, I'm the, sorry. Yeah, well, yeah, no, I got the order mixed up, but at least the last article I read said that they were hoping maybe they could come back in September or come back. I actually have to start in September, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, the COVID, I think COVID just delayed everything, man. Oh, but man. In, a, in, in a good and in a bad way. In a good way because everybody was home. For, everybody's been home for a while, right? So a lot of phone calls that you're not able to, that you're not been able to get or a lot of things that you're not being able to organize. Mm -hmm. Finally, have the time to get them done, to get it done. Uh, so that was cool. But I think now it's a, it's a stretch now. You know, it's a bit too long. We need to start moving again. But um, the world, you know, I mean, this the virus is real. The virus is real. So as great as, as superhuman you want to feel, right? Uh, you can't complain. You know, uh, that's a, that's terrible because you can like I think it's. Like, cause we're still young, you should be able to go through. I mean, you know, I still have cases that you can go through, but technically we should still go through, but you don't want to impact the people that are around you, uh, that disease, so it's tough, man. So literally every decision that you make, you gotta, it's bigger than just yourself. It's about everybody that's around you. Uh, that's the thing about the COVID-19, but like, yeah. So in terms of sports, um, yeah, it's just been, uh, frustrating because like you just you have to reinvent yourself as a brand. Um, right. Yeah. Like people of mine that just does sports content. Uh you gotta kind of you gotta go back, back, back. You gotta read those reports. You gotta understand this player. What did he do this back in the days? What happened there, blah blah blah. Uh you have to get like even the content on the website. Uh we write so we wrote, like we go back, we, like we wrote a story about Pele. I haven't even shared on the Apple Boys IG yet because I want to. I want to break it down properly. But um, like you, like there's a story of Philly that uh, that there was like a civil war in Nigeria, and Philly um, yeah. came, Philly came to play, and for two days straight they just stopped fighting just to watch Philly play. So Isn't Philly, that sorry, Isn't that crazy? Like it's just like, just immediately we just stopped. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Literally. So like you see like now you kind of go, like the thing about the COVID is that now you have to go back in history. Uh, uh, so in, in a way that was good because I, I got to understand so much more than what's just happening now and today. Because mm -hmm. you get caught up in what's now and today, then you know you don't really care about the past. But like um, we we come from you know there's a there's a history of what we've done in uh, the African continent that uh, that you know I'm I'm trying to, to share now as well on the platform. So. You can share the website. There's been a lot of that content. Uh -huh. the social media, it's not out there yet. I need to, uh, I need to break it down in a way that you know it's going to be understandable for everybody. But uh, very soon, it's going to be out there. It's going to be a series for uh, Know Your Greats. Mm. That's so, going to be, that's going to be dope. Um, Pat, if you want to go to number nine, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, no, no. So Pat, this, obviously you're like right. You freeze. You, Wait, Sorry? you're not saying? Oh, Pat, I was going to say, you want to go to number nine? You're yeah, what? yeah, yeah. You're, so, you're, you're, you got COVID? <laughs> Maybe. Hopefully not. Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, you have a front row seat to all of this. So are there any, like, up-and-coming players right now that we should, in any sport, that we should, like, keep our eyes on? 
this Mukoko, Cameroonian guy who plays at Dortmund. Uh huh. Shoot the beast, man. Uh, soccer, that's football. Uh huh. Uh, basketball, man. Uh, yo, you guys need to start watching those guys in Europe. The, you know, the, there's a few of them that are gonna be coming. You guys are gonna be like, what? Uh huh. Uh huh. You're gonna be like, what? Uh, I mean, you can see the the guys like the the, the, the Doncic, like there's some guys like that playing yeah. the same way that we used to. But like, yeah, I think I'm gonna just make a quick list real quick, so it can be uh, broken down. I think uh, the most exciting talent to watch right now might be this. Uh, I think um, I, I want to put this South Sudanese key kid called uh, Omaha Billy. Uh, I want to put. Number one, number two, I want to put this uh, the police kid called Ariel Porti, who plays in Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, the number three, I want to put uh, this Congolese one called uh, Victor Wembanyama. I don't know if you heard about it. No, only it's funny because I only know is he, he's not in the states, is he? No, huh? Uh, he's in France, but man, yo, yeah, yeah. these guys the real deal, man. Uh -huh. Like the thing is, um, like, there's a lot of this, no more. There's when it comes to basketball. Mm -hmm. uh, when they're black in Europe, they mostly are. Most of the time, they are like nine right. times the time they black. While in, uh, in America, it's a different story. Right. So, went to Mbanyama, came out in Winsu, uh, he plays for uh, Lyon in, uh, in France. Mm. And then, uh, my fifth one would be here, Mukoko. Uh, like I said, in, uh, in uh, football, I think he's an uh, exciting talent. Mm -hmm. that's my, that would be my top five, man. Watch. Okay, it's funny because I'm thinking about like um, we got there's this kid Jonathan I don't know how to pronounce his last name. He number one in high school. Yeah, and um, he's in New Jersey, Congolese. Uh, um, Kuminga. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, Kuminga, yeah Kuminga is a real deal, man. Yeah, <laughs> Kuminga is already made it, bro. Yeah, he's uh, he's uh, he's, uh, he's, he's gonna be big, man. Now, so like, a, like, like, a, like, you know, I think like you guys have been watching sports for a minute. Uh, sometimes it's like sports is all about your real power. Like you can yeah. have all the talents in the world, uh -huh. but if you don't have that real power, uh, you're not gonna have a good impact. So just like I think, the, I think that's the key for every player. So if Kuming becomes hungry, because we know he's, we know he's got the talent to be an all star. We all know that now. Yeah, right, right, right. But you, yeah. you just gotta be hungry to get those rings, bro. You gotta be. Like he's yeah. gotta get those. So he's gotta be. Yeah, he's just gotta stay hungry. If he stays hungry, yeah, and he's gonna eat, man, he's gonna be. He might just be. He might like. Yeah, I, I don't know, but he might be able to compete with Hakeem. No, he might be able to here's the thing. You see, Giannis, Giannis already has the MVP. If Giannis wins like two or three championships, it's gonna set the standard for all the other Africans. We're gonna be like, well, you can't just come here and just ball. You gotta mm -hmm. get rankings, MVPs. Yeah, but that's the right. Like you gotta do it right. Like I can't set the bar straight. Yeah. You know? so, underrated. so underrated. Huh? Yeah, it's so probably, underrated. I, think, I really think like I can that's my own that's my own personal debate. But I think I think Hakeem uh -huh. when I think Hakeem if he had to play the uh, the, the, the Bulls or uh, in a, <laughs> in a so that 94 ring? Yeah, yeah. I think they would have won. I think yeah. he would have won. Let me tell you something, Kevin. When Jordan, you ask Jordan, who's your starting five? He always sees Hakeem as the center. And you remember when he got drafted, he only got mad that Sam Bowie got picked in front of him. Never Hakeem. Because yeah, Jordan, he was, he was like, this guy. Yeah, he's the real deal. He's the, the real deal. He's the, the real. Hakeem, is, Hakeem was the real deal. And. Like he was talented, and right. I think he's over. I think people overlook him. Like at, in his wait, for in his second year, he went to the NBA Finals. Right, right, so won, right. right. Eighty six, and he won. He won two rings without no scoring people on his side. I mean that he had no no nobody on his side. L listen, I think uh, I think the reason why we overlook him because he wasn't loud. He's not. Yeah. He's not he was Tim Duncan before Tim Duncan. Right, right. And mm -hmm. you know, his whole ordeal was just like, I just bust people's ass on the court and I go home. He didn't yeah, do no. commercials. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't, he's not loud. No. Yeah, he's not, he's not loud. And yeah, he's still not that ego. He's, uh, yeah. he, was, he was a man 
just uh, he was just doing his work. He was just doing his job. And but, you can uh, tell, you can tell how good he was because when think about when Kobe was alive, LeBron, who did they go to learn post moves from? They went to Akeem. They're like, I gotta work with the dream. I gotta work with the dream. Guy was crazy footwork. Yeah, crazy footwork, man. This is like. And B, like, not like nowadays, and B got so much large one in him. Uh -huh. just, yeah, man. And B, man, I just didn't have me to just tap into his, his hidden body and just come out strong, man. Get the African out of him. So hey, Kevin, let me ask you a question. What's wrong with Embiid? You know what bothers me about Embiid? And yeah. Patrick, I'm having a moment. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you do your thing. Do your thing. Tell with Embiid, Embiid is not. Like, his lower body isn't strong. Like, he's not physically in shape like he should be to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And Embiid's great. Like, he averaged 28 last year. Like, uh, what am I talking about? But it's like, he could dominate even more. Because there's nothing he can't do. He can shoot. He can post. Block shots. Assist. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I think he's, uh, like I said earlier, like, he might just be the real power, man. Like, I... I I, I think he was the last dance. Like, it's a whole, if you want to be great, yeah. you around, you got to be great. You can't yeah. just be great in, in, uh, in this. Like, you got to be focused on your nutrition. Yeah. You got to be focused on your environment. Uh -huh. uh, you got to, you must have, you must find uh, um, distractions. I mean, you must have a few distractions, but that doesn't drive you away from your main goal. Right. Uh, like, you got to be like a whole ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know where it is you uh, MB. Uh, I think he's great. I think he's doing good. I think I just think he can be greater. I think yeah. he has not reached his full potential. Yeah. And that's crazy to say because he's such a beast already. Such a beast. But he's such a beast. But yeah, I think he just got I think he's got more inside of him, and I just hope he just. I just hope he gets at least one, two rings, man. All right, me too. I think, I think he can. I think he can get it. I think he's got that in him. Yeah, and that he can be one of the greatest ever. Like you see someone like Giannis. Giannis, like that's a like, different animal. Like recently, people were saying Anthony Davis and Giannis. Right? They said they said like Anthony Davis is more skilled than Giannis. Right. I'm not going to disagree with them. Like I think actually, Davis got more skills than Giannis. Yeah. But that willpower, that willpower that Yannis has, that no, heart? Yeah, it's different. No, because you know why? Because remember when, uh, you know, you don't have to say it. I'll, and these are my views. Yannis said, I don't want to work out with anybody. He's not asking for help. That guy, if you saw him his first year, how slim and thin he was to now, how ripped and cut he is, and how he goes to the rack with so much force. He's like, this is about business. You remember when they played the Clippers and they beat the Clippers by 20? And he, what he was telling the Clippers, we're going to see you guys. We're here. Like, he's not playing around. Giannis is like, I wonder if we lost. He's not playing around. Mental strength, bro. No. Yeah, you, that's what it's about. Like, you got to have that mental strength. Yeah. And, um, like, I just feel like like maybe that's someone like MB doesn't have the same mental toughness. Yeah. That's why at the end of the day, this is what separates the grace from the good. Like you, like you see someone like like that. That's that's an excellent basketball player. Yeah, he doesn't have that mindset. Yeah, like he just that's what it is, man. So like like yeah, man. I think Amy is a more naturally gifted than, than Yanis, but I think Yanis is <laughs> the demental. Look, Yanis is like picture this, and I'm just saying hypothetical. I love Chris Middleton, but could you picture if you put Bradley Beal on the bus with Giannis. Oh yeah, that would be that would be right, so, you know what yeah. like, like, and look, Giannis is winning sixty-five games, and I like Chris Middleton, but I'm just saying, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, that's true. That's true. If you bring like the real Scotty on the side, yeah, that would let him know. Oh, he's gonna get two or three rings easy. Two oh, or three, easy. two or three easy. easy. Two, like, as long as he doesn't do what he did last year in the playoffs. Then, uh -huh. yeah. He doesn't. I think he doesn't chicken out. Uh -huh. did last year. Cause last year was was going to go, man. Right. He chickened out, man. He just chickened out. I don't know what happened. Man. He just chickened out, bro. But it happened. It was his first time. So, I, so, yeah, I forgive him. So Kevin, who we? Uh, you kind of hinted on it. I think you said one. But who are your top five, top five African athletes? I have mine. Who's your five? 
à faire uh-huh. au temps. Uh-huh. Zidane. Ouais, là, bon, Zidane. Ah, bon, ah, ah, bon, juste le prochain uh-huh. Zidane. Uh, uh, Zidane, Hakim. Uh-huh. Dikembe. Uh-huh. Uh, Ou Bima Four. Uh, any sports, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, any sports, yeah, any sports. Any sports. Uh, I got a good AJ, man. AJ's doing things that we've never seen before. Okay. And then my fifth would be, uh, I want to say Yanis. It's so weird because I was going to say, I thought it would be your fourth, but I, yeah. Yeah, I want to say Yanis because, simply because, man, like, I think for all of us that are, like, second generation Africans. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, this story talks to us a lot more than any other stories. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's real. Yeah. Dad, like, he, he's, got, he's got the dual citizenship. He's Greek and Nigerian. Uh, I'm European and African. I got both nationalities as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's able to bowl out there mm-hmm. uh, and, and be the MVP of the league. And that's like, Crazy. that's something that I think every, every kid of the diaspora. Can relate to that's the most relatable story I've ever had myself. Yeah, like I think if I was a kid right now, instead oh. of looking at LeBron or Kobe or right, or, yeah, one of those guys, right, I would have been looking up to Giannis because he's like me, he's African, right. and right. He's looking, you know what I'm saying? So I think, yeah, he's got the best. I think for now, he's just the one that you know, I really, uh, I would really look up to it. He also really has those African values that we all respect, you know, family values. Right. Family values. Um, he's a family guy, and, you know, as Africans, family is everything for us as well. Right. So, yeah, man, Yanis. Yeah, Yanis, man. Uh, it's, it's funny because I had, I had Akeem, because I'm, I'm more basketball than soccer, just growing up here in the States. So it was Akeem Matumbo. I had Ibaka because he won a championship. I had Giannis. Yeah. That's four. Yeah. Actually, I had Giannis is third. Ibaka's fourth or whatever. And my fifth, maybe Sedan, right? But when you talk about Giannis, I like the point you brought up. If I was 12 years old right now, growing up in L.A., yeah. I think, because yeah. when, when I was 12, it was Kobe. He's in L.A. Hello? I think if, let's say, it was Kobe and Giannis, Hello? I would relate it more to oh, wait, Hold on. I think it's sound. You still there? Hey. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. And, you know, and, and let me tell you this, Kevin, you know why I personally related more to Kobe when I was like 10 or 11? He spoke multiple languages. He grew up in Italy. So we could relate to that. Yeah, true. We we're like, oh, he speaks languages too? Oh, he, he's foreign? Like he grew up in another country? Okay, yeah. I get it. You know? Yeah, that's true. So with the honest, at 12 right now, he, I probably would have been a Bucks. I would have been a, I would have been a Bucks fan. I'd like, oh, I'm Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah, straight up. I think it's straight up. Like, as Africans, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but we, we just have to support him because the story is the best story for us, for our people. Right. You can relate to it. That's something we can relate to. Usually, you can relate to uh, Man, and, like, usually, like, when you think about, like, uh, like people in France as well, most of, like, a lot of them, are, you know, they believe in uh, poor, poor conditions as well. Mm-hmm. Like, like, Yannis was. Like, literally, like, Yannis. Yeah. So that's the just, I think, is the perfect story. Man. I just... Yo, I hope our boys get to do that movie in like 10 years or something about Yanis life or something. Yeah. I know we'll release one too. Uh, but you know, maybe in 10 years time, our boys can release one, one as well. All right, so Kevin, we're all, oh, go ahead, Patrick. You want to ask this uh, next question? I'll, I'll do the last one. Hold on. Of oh, course. No worries. Where are we at? We at. Uh, number 11, number 11, sir. Okay, so um, this morning, the hypothetical, just, you know, imagine the future five years from now. Uh, what does Afro Ballers look like? How, how are things going for Afro Ballers? In five years' time, uh-huh. ideally, you are the number one platform. You will. For African sports, period. I mean, the thing is, like, uh, so this is what I'm realizing as well as we go. As we go. Uh, you got to start covering African Americans as well, in, in a way. So everything yeah. that's like a neutral report has got to be on our platform. Right, but you also gotta have the uh, the African content that's been, that's covered like and it's never been done before. You gotta cover African content like nobody has ever done before. So in five years' time, I want us to be seen as the number one platform for African sport for Afro sports. Period. 
Right. Um, so I want us to be more than just a, a social media brand. We got to be um, a studio. Uh, we must have a few series that must be out there. A few production that must be, you know, on a, um, video on demand platforms. Uh -huh. like, um, you know, Netflix, Hulu, blah, 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 whatever it's going to be. Kevin, Kevin yeah. do you plan on doing like a. I don't see. I grew up here in the states. When I was in high school, there used to be this Chicago prep show where they would follow the senior year of like top Chicago prep. Is that something you want to do with Afro Balls? Where it's like, oh, I got the top. Yeah, we probably do this right now, man. Like, I can't even, I can't even close with the details, but <laughs> these, these are the things that we kind of working on. We really trying to get that content uh -huh. from in perspective. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, when I say I want to inspire the people from the continent, I want them to get the content. From our people, the authentic content, like you want to, like you want to go into Kuminga's house, um, into Yanni's house when he's 16, 17. Right. So you get, how he grows up, how this guy grew up sitting in food, how his mom tells him about the Bible and everything. Like you know, there's a whole discipline that we have, there's a whole culture that we have that we got to be able to tell the world. Like we right. think that's not the passion behind it. Like there's a whole story of us. Uh -huh. People, people don't even know us. Like we have a whole culture, but man, I know so much more about. I mean, I know so much about white culture. I ain't even white. Right, right. I watch so many movies. I know so much about their culture. They right. don't even know anything about mine. So I want to. I want to be able to create main, like mainstream um, documentaries, movies, open uh, whatever, man. That's that's uh, that that, that, that speak to our people and going to be able to tell our story to the to the world. You will. I can see it. It's funny. Kevin, I already see it. You will. I already I see it. Man. I you, you, know. Um, you, man. you know what? I wrote this down when we started, and I wanted to get your opinion. How do you feel about NBA African Americans that are like, hey, I can't make the Olympic team. I'm in the NBA, but I, I'm not on the Olympic team, but they want to play for African nations. So, like, Spencer Dinwiddie. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's like, I'm going to play for Nigeria. How do you think? I think that's great. What do you think about it? I think it's, I think it's nice, great. Nice bridge, and that's where, like, in 10, 15, 20 years' time, when you have any you know, guys from the continent that made it, or you know, guys that are real Nigerians or real Congolese uh -huh. uh, that can literally go and play for the teams. I don't think we need, I mean, we can they can compete with the guys in America. I don't see the need of us doing this. You know, I don't think there's a, but I think, yeah, for now, yeah, man, I'm over. Man. Yo, right. it's not going to the Olympics next, next year, right? Then, they, they are leading the Olympics with medals for sure. Like they got Spencer. Dewey. People don't realize that Spencer Dewey is a sick point guard, man. Oh, he's sick. He grew up out here in LA. He's sick. He went to Taft. Yeah. He's incredible. Yeah, the guy's yeah, incredible. incredible. So yeah. him coming to Nigeria, like to play to Nigeria, that's gonna be crazy. Right. Like, I don't know who else is gonna come that on that squad, but um, I just I I, I think that there's gonna be a few NBA dudes like Jordan Wara. Social Kogi guys that are going to be there. Maybe Charles Bossy, Precious at like, uh -huh. like yeah, that squad is going to be lit. That squad is meant to be lit. They they got Mike Brown as a coach. I don't know what else they're trying to do, but I know yeah. they're trying, I know they're going to try to do some super some some crazy stuff again before before it happens. Uh -huh. So God, just I'm just saying right now we are going to get a medal. So that means we're going to be top three in the world in 2021 Olympics. All right. So that's, I'm just stating it right now. That's and, and Patrick, the coach he said that guy coached at Texas. He coached Kevin Durant. So mm -hmm. that's that's how you re you reinvent. Like you're like, hey, let me. Let, this is how you bring notoriety to you to look like your team. That that's brilliant. So we're here with Kevin from Afro Ball. So Kevin, this is the last question. First of all, brother, thank you so much for doing this. We love everything you're doing. Support everything you're doing. I see. I see where you're going in five years. I just want tickets to the NBA Finals game. That's all I'm asking for. Give us Batu Boys tickets to the NBA Finals or the Africa Finals. Um, we ask this to every guest. What is your spirit animal? So what's an animal you uh, you see yourself in? Like for for me, it's a, it's a, a leopard or a black panther. I mean, a black panther, right? Or a leopard. Uh, for your, Patrick, it's a falcon, right? So what? Like, a fal like what's an animal that you share the uh, character? Uh, what, what, what is he for Patrick? Um, a falcon. 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 Okay, so can you tell me why you have a black panther? Um, because you know a panther's mysterious. It's the only cat that can eat food in a tree, 
So it's special. It's unique. That's how I feel I am. I was like, oh, I'm unique. I do things different. Okay. How about you, what, Falcon? Falcon. Um, it's weird. It's almost paradox because I have a fear of heights. But I guess as a bird, you know, be able to fly high in the sky. And they fly very fast. Very fast. I think like 180 miles per hour. And they're big. I thought it was you oversee everything. That's part of it. That's part of it. But, you know, like for somebody who's afraid of heights, what's the best thing? Being able to fly. Mm-hmm. Then you don't have to be afraid no more. So there's a, you know, a little, a little psychology in there. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, I would say a Jaguar, man. Ooh, strong. Why? Because uh, I, like, I like to, you know, the very discreet animals, uh, they attack from behind like nobody sees them coming. Um, I like, I like I like how that works, and they you know I like the dark ones. They are not seen a lot. I don't like to be too public as well. Uh-huh. Uh, like I'm, not, I like to be on the cover, and just do my work. You know, I don't, I don't. This is really one. I'm, I'm really trying to impact in the, in the background, and I think uh, I think people fear the jaguar because you know he's respected in the jungle. Yeah, he's still, he's still on the cover. He's still one of those quiet ones that you don't really know where he is, where he does, but you know he's doing something crazy. You know, so that's a that's a jaguar. Okay, I I I, I like that. And nobody, I don't think nobody's ever said jaguar. That's great. Uh, so we're here with Kevin from Afro Baller. So Kevin, can where can people find you? Could you plug your social media page, please? Uh, myself. Uh, so first of all, everybody you gotta follow Afro Ballers. Afro Ballers. Yes. Yeah, you gotta follow the movement. This is for the culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, then uh, myself, my own IG is Kev underscore B W K E V underscore B W. Mm-hmm. Uh, on uh, Twitter, uh, my name is K Ball Wilson, or I got another one called JKS and it's called BW. Uh, on Facebook, Kevin ABW, LinkedIn, Kevin Ball Wilson, and uh, yeah, and all the other platforms, the one with Afro Ball is in here. Afro Ball is the one to follow me, not me, but Afro Ball is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And that's the website, yeah. So every every black news is covered on the website now. Mm. It's not a mess, so you guys check it out. Uh, it's all black owned, black writers, black owners, you know, we keep you aware of that. Oh, great. I I would... oh, no, this is, no, Kevin, this is great. And please, everybody, make sure you guys follow Afro Ballers, follow Kevin on this journey. Um, you can follow, I mean, you guys are already following us on Bossy Boys. Like us on Facebook, Instagram. Um, Subscribe on YouTube, uh, and you can follow. And from there, you can follow me, Blake Awisa, um and Patrick. Give people your uh, your um, social media, please. Uh, you can find me at Congolese.YouTubers on Instagram, as well as African.YouTubers uh, on Instagram. We promote the culture, whether it's Congolese or just the African diaspora as a whole. Yeah, thank right. you guys for inviting me today. It was a pleasure for me. Not to uh, similar-minded people. Uh-huh. And, uh, you guys would love to with the podcast and uh, whatever you're trying to achieve as well. Oh. Uh, but however we can help, you guys let me know. You know? Oh. I'm, I'm down to help. Uh, I, I like you guys. You what you're doing. So yeah, let's make it happen, man. Oh, Kevin, absolutely. Thank you so much. So what we'll do is I think if anything, um, Patrick, you can, you can get um, you can email him uh, the Afro Ballers logo or whatever. So we'll let you know when we have a we have the audio podcast and we'll tag you all right ever so we'll probably tag you all week when we release this episode and okay. uh, yeah brother yeah and you know what it's funny because patrick it'd be great for him to come to the malaika mm, yeah. it, so next year we're gonna help host a uh, an event that uh, for this charity event with this congolese supermodel we'll give you the information we'd love for you to come we love okay. to recommend that you when when we can start traveling again yeah, I'm, yeah, right, right, right. I'm coming like crazy, man. So I'm just waiting for that time. I'm just waiting for that time. Like right now, I'm just a bit sensitive, but uh, whenever we can stop traveling again, man, I'm down to come to, come to California and you know, just kicking you guys. Man. Uh, thank, thank you so much, brother. All right, well, if that's the next time, you guys, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you guys so much. Okay. All right. Oh, thank, you thank you so much, brother. Ha <laughs> ha